y'all and welcome to the crazy sock lady youtube channel my name is Kay, and i am the person behind crazy sock lady and the owner of crazy sock lady co today is wednesday february 9th and i have a sofa the whole half of this sectional is full of things to share with you today it's only been two weeks right but wow a lot has happened <laughs> as far as things that have arrived in the mail, socks that have been finished. Yeah, we got some things to chat about today. So grab your coffee, your tea, your beverage of choice. Hope you've got some knitting and you are settled in and ready to spend a little bit of time together. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee because I just poured it and it is so warm and delicious. I'm using my Crazy Sock Lady campfire mug. These are something that I used to carry in my Etsy shop quite a while back. It's been a long time since I've carried these. Um, I had the Crazy Sock Lady. I had, what all did I have? Scrappy Sunday. The first year of Summer Sock Camp, I had mugs. Um, and then I kind of stopped carrying them. I had a lot of issues with the supplier I was using at the time and just various things. So I finally have these in the shop again. If you are someone who's been asking because they have been the most requested item when I've asked, what do you guys want to see at Crazy Sock Lady Co? Y'all want the camp fire mugs back. So this style, this color is back right now. There was still some left. I put it in there yesterday, um, but there was still some left this morning when I looked. So. so you can head over and check that out if you are one of the people who was asking for those to come back. So you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. I will put links right down below this video in the description box to everywhere that you can find me. Like I said, there has been so many <laughs> things in the past two weeks. These are all of the socks that have been finished. I think I was working on those the last time. Don't think they were finished. Um, but yeah, four pairs of socks. That's kind of crazy. Oh, what was, I was gonna say something else. Oh, just that project pages for everything that I talk about will be linked down below as well. So yarn use, needle size, pattern, everything can be found over there on those project pages. So I've definitely <laughs> been doing quite a bit of knitting. I still have my sweaters on the needles and one pair of socks and that's, really it aside from still having an advent project on the needles and some three scrappy blankets that's all i've got going so that's kind of impressive <laughs> i feel like that i have resisted the urge to cast on all the things for this long because the urge is there i am not the type of person who only does one pair of socks at a time this is impressive um, I'm just rolling with it because this is what I'm liking right now. And I'm sure I will cast on a million socks and have a million going again. <laughs> All right. I can't. Oh, yeah. I was going to say I can't remember what order I knit these in, but I think, I think that's correct. So I believe I was working on these the last time I recorded. Recorded. These were the January Yarnable colorway, and I knit these for my husband, Eric. I just did my vanilla socks pattern. I knit him a size medium out of that pattern, and I did do Knit 2 Pearl 2 for the ribbing. US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. Yeah, just a, a basic vanilla sock. Sometimes that's what you need. Got quite a few of those here. So apparently that was, <laughs> that was what I was needing. The next pair of socks I knit, I asked last week which yarn I should cast on because I needed some help. 
deciding. So this one won by a landslide, just from what I could see from the comments. I didn't actually like tally or anything, but it seems like this one was the winner. This was, I had mini skeins of this. It's a dragon horde yarn and no idea on the colorway. It wasn't, they weren't labeled and these were from years ago, years ago. So I used, I think I only needed three 20 gram minis, I believe, um, to knit these. So these are from my mother-in-law. I did them on US1 2.25 millimeter needles, size medium from my vanilla socks pattern. And I knit all of these magic loop. Same thing, knit two purl two ribbing for the cuff on all of these. These socks, these were a Regia. Let me see, it's in the project page, but let me double check because I do not have the tag here. I've already put it in my making journal. It was, oh, oh, oh no, go back. A Regia, the actual name of it is in the project page, but the collar was number 5738. Regia Strato collar. These are for Eric as well. Same pattern, same needle size. I thought these worked up so fun. I picked this yarn up at Actually, I think I have that on the project page as well at Knit On in Newport, Kentucky, when I went on to the Kentucky Fiber Festival this past May. So yeah, super fun yarn to knit up. I love Regia. It holds up so well. It's such a, such a rustic yarn. Eric really likes it. I find that he definitely reaches for those socks um, a good bit. So it was nice to knit these up. and. Both of these socks that I did for him, I'm going to be gifting to him tomorrow. Tomorrow is our 16 year wedding anniversary. So I will be, I thought that would be a fun gift. He, he gets socks for like his birthday, Christmas anniversary. He gets socks for everything, but he never complains and he loves them and loves to wear them. So I'll be gifting those to him tomorrow. The last pair of socks that I knit is my vanilla DK weight pattern. I knit these on a US 3 2 point, or no, US 3 3.25 millimeter, right? And this was a sock set from a homespun house that came in one of her boxes of Huga. I believe it was the November box. I'm almost positive it was the November box of Huga. And it is Into the Woods is the colorway name. And then the pink is Hopscotch. I love these. And this is actually, I think the first time I've ever done a contrast anything on a DK weight sock. So it was fun to do that. I should have weighed to see how much I used for the heels, but I did not. Next time I will do that. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought these would be fun to knit up some DK weight socks. They go pretty quick. And that's all the socks. This is what happens when I do one pair of socks at a time, apparently. I just fly because I'm not being torn between which pair of socks do I work on. I just finish and then start the next and I don't even know who I am right now. So like I said, just going with it. That's it for finished objects. works in progress. I started, so I am still working on my dishcloths. They're in the Jeep. I'm not going to go get them right now. I finished one in the Dishy Twist, the black. I think I showed that last time, that yarn. I finished one and I am over halfway done with the second one. So I'll probably wait until I finish all of that collar and then, then show you guys those finished ones instead of showing them every every time I record when they really don't get I only work on them on Thursday or Tuesdays 
when I'm waiting at Wyatt's lesson. So I do still have those going, but aside from that, I only have like active whips, one pair of socks, two sweaters. So let's chat about those. The first one is my sock project, and this is in a bag from Matter Root. I might have picked this up at Rhinebeck one year. I absolutely love it. I haven't used it in ages, and it's been so fun to pull out some different project bags and be using them lately. So yeah, this one is from Matter Root. It's got these clips on the side, and you just kind of roll it down. It's kind of hard to do holding it up. There we go. Roll it down and clip it. So yeah, it's a fun, cute little bag. And I obviously love the color. So this, mm, I just got this yarn. It was from a club. So if you got the Bumblebee Acres January Stephen King Club and you have not received it or have not opened it. I think it was the January. Let me look at the tag. Was it the February? No, it was January. Okay. Um, maybe look away. I will just show the page and the sock. Um, I think everyone should have received it by now though, but just in case, I'm going to show it now. So this is another pair of socks for Eric. And here is, I'll show the the colorway name and the inspiration and stuff. Here is the yarn. And this is on their Coquette sock. Yes. It is a 75% superwash Corydale wool, 25% nylon. Uh, 434 yards to 100 grams. It is a very rustic, definitely feels more like a regia, but I love it. Eric has a pair of socks out of this base and they've worn very well. He's had them for, I think a couple of years and they still look really nice. So I cast this on yesterday afternoon and I'm through the heel flap. Pretty ridiculous. So for this, I follow, I'm following the counts from my vanilla sock pattern, a size medium for him, knit two pearl two ribbing for the cuff. And then I had intended to do a pattern here and I just, before I knew really what I was doing, was doing a knit three pearl one rib and wasn't ripping back. So that's what we're, what we're doing here. <laughs> he has a couple of pairs of socks that I knit him a few years ago, I think, that are a knit three pearl one rib. I was on a kick with that for a little while and they do fit him really well. So I just thought, well, we're gonna go with that and do a knit three pearl one rib for this pair of socks. So I'm using Chow Goo Red Lace. That's what I always use for my socks. US one, 2.25 millimeter. All right sweater time. I have actually, I, mm, I might've worked on my sweaters on Saturday. Maybe. I don't know. I know I worked on them on Friday. Today's Wednesday. This would have been last Friday. They might not have been worked on since Friday. So I'm hoping I can get this video up. I recorded a yarnable unboxing, get these edited, uploaded and have some good time to sit and focus on my sweaters this afternoon. For me, especially because they're both pattern sweaters, it's not just a basic stockinette, I have to be sitting and be able to have the brain space and focus a little bit on them. They're not a pick up and take with me or just pick up and knit a couple rounds here and there. That's when I grab my socks and that's probably why I have finished so many socks. <laughs> because they're the only kind of pick up and knit a few rounds here and there um, project that I have right now. Let's talk about my cartwheels first. So this is in a bag from Mountain State Stitches. And 
And I finished the first sleeve. So I'm knitting this for the crazy cabled sweater cowl that I am hosting with Lindsay of Sock Witchery. It is running from January 1st to June 1st and it's any adult garment that has cables in it. So I've got the second sleeve started. Here's that, not too much to show. The ribbing is done and I am into the chart. Backtrack here. The pattern I'm using is Cartwheels by Rita Taylor. The yarn I'm using is Wool of the Andes Worsted and Icicle Heather. This is from Knit Picks. And I went ahead, so I finished the first sleeve and I had the front and back done, finished the first sleeve. I thought about just like putting all the pieces into the project bag and leaving it, but I did go ahead and attach the saddle portion because it is a piece sweater. You knit the pieces and then seam it. I did go ahead and attach the saddle portion up here at the shoulder. And here we are. So it looks a little funny now with just one sleeve attached just at the top, but I thought I'm gonna get that out of the way. <laughs> That's less seeming I have to do at the end. So here's, we'll just say the front because the front and the back are the same. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Here's sleeve one. Hold it maybe this way so you can kind of you can see there where I've attached it and then that sleeve one whoop. and I am so happy with it I think it's gonna fit really great I am like oh my gosh this sleeve seems massive but that's okay. I want an oversized cabled garment here. So <laughs> it probably just looks bigger than it's actually going to be, but the sleeve, but yeah, super happy with it. I, like I said, hoping to sit down and work on it a little bit this afternoon. Fingers crossed. I think that's it for this. I'm following the pattern exactly, doing the fourth size. Cause like I said, I want it a bit oversized. So I decided to do the fourth size in the pattern. I think that's all for this one. Needle sizes, I'm using what's recommended, all of that. My other sweater is a sea glass sweater by Wool and Pine Designs. This is in my field, I don't remember if it was the field, but it's Fringe Supply Co. They are no longer in business. And I, I think I, I don't think I had split for the sleeves the last time. I have split for the sleeves. Oh, and I have something fun to show you with that. Okay, I need to remember to do that. Okay, that's the back. So I've split for the sleeves and I'm working on the body. So this I'm using for the main collar, Knit Pick Swish DK in Dove Heather. And then for the contrast color and the color work on the body, I'm using scraps. So far I've been using fingering weight scraps held double to make a DK weight for that contrast color. And then I did throw in my Into the Woods DK weight scraps. That's what I had left after the DK weight socks. So I think I'm gonna add these in too. But other than that, I just have a ton of like pinks and purples from socks and things over the years. So it's a fun, scrappy project. I did weave in, this is the back 
where the beginning of round is. And I did weave in all of my ends there. So the way that I did it, she, I think this might have actually been on her Instagram or I can't remember, Wool and Pine um, Designs, where they had this at that I watched this video of different ways to weave in your ends. And one was just to loop it through the floats for that color. So that's what I did. I did like pull it and um, like I was gonna knot it and pull it tight while looking at the back of the fabric to make sure it wasn't gonna leave. It did leave a little bit of a, a spot, which I think you have sometimes when you're bringing in a new yarn. But I tried to make sure the stitches were even and then weave it in. So it's a scrappy sweater, it's fine. <laughs> I am not bothered by little things like that. So I'm very pleased with this, very, very pleased. What I used that I have to share with you guys, let me find it, there it is, are the Knitting Barber cords. I'm sure you guys have heard of these. I actually, I had seen them everywhere, heard everyone talking about how great they were. I got on to place a wholesale order for some needles and notions and my distributor had them in stock, which I knew they had been carrying them, but every time I'd went to place an order, they were out of stock. So it's kind of like, well, just not the right time to get them, but they had them in stock. So I thought I'm going to order some and see what I think. Amazing. So amazing. So what they are, you guys have probably already seen this, but I will share just in case somebody hasn't. There are these cords and they're, they come with three different, does it say on here? One 60 inch and two 30 inch cords. It is like literally just a cord. You attach it. And if you go over to Crazy Sock Lady Co, I do have a video linked in the listing for these that kind of gives you a run through on how to use them. So you just attach it to the end of your needle and then you work your stitches off onto this cord while leaving your needle attached to this. You can take your needle off once everything's onto the cord if you want to. I left my needle completely attached. I just got all of my stitches down onto this cord left my needle just attached at the end of the cord and tried on my sweater. Do be gentle. Um, it shows you on there like the right and the wrong way to put your stitches over so that you don't accidentally pop the cord off, but it is pretty secure. I did pop it off once. I will be honest. I popped it off once, but that's because I got impatient and I was like, Oh, come on. I just want to get this done so I can try this on and then pop there it went. <laughs> so, just be patient with it. But it was so much quicker than typically if I wanted to try a sweater on, what I would do is put it onto waist yarn. So then you're sitting there with a, what I would use is like a tapestry needle, put the waist yarn on the tapestry needle and then sit there and stitch by stitch by stitch by stitch, take it off and put it onto the waist yarn. Or you could always put it on a larger cord with your needles or something if you're using an interchangeable but all of those just seem to take so much time for me. This just sliding these stitches onto this cord was so much quicker. But like I said, definitely be gentle and don't be impatient like me because that is why it popped off. But then when you're done, just give it a little tug, take that off um, and you're good to go. I mean, it amazing. I will always use these for trying on my sweaters now instead of having to do it with waist yarn. So this is the violet color. Right now, we don't have a ton of colors in stock over at Crazy Sock Lady Co, but I actually have a box right back here that has more. So by the time this video goes up, maybe there will be more in stock. If not, it'll be within the next couple of days after this video goes up. Um, just depends on if I get this up today or tomorrow but I did reorder every color that we're out of. So if you go check, it's not there. Just check back in a couple of days. Or definitely follow on Instagram. I always say that's the best place. I always put on there, you know, if I've restocked something that people are asking about. I 
think that's it for this. I said it was by Wool and Pine. Using the needle size as recommended, following the pattern exactly. One, two, three, four. For this one, I'm doing size five because one, it's collar work, so I sized up because I didn't swatch. I figured I love, obviously, I mean, this is pretty oversized. <laughs> I love huge oversized things. They're so comfy and cozy and better too big than too small, especially for something like this. It's going to be nice and, and warm and cozy. All right, I think that's it. Let me move my project pages over here so I can get to all of the mail because there's been a lot, <laughs> a lot. Did you guys just hear Dexter snoring? He's asleep in his bed right behind me. Okay. So let me just show this. I usually don't show the Yarnable colorways on here, but right before I recorded this, I recorded uh, the Yarnable unboxing for this month. So. The yarn that came in the February Yarnable box, um, if you haven't received it yet, maybe don't, don't look if you don't want a spoiler, but this is Raspberry Cream on her Plush Sock 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Base. So pretty. If you wanna see the full unboxing, I will try to remember to link the video here. I have a whole playlist of them. Um, and I share a coupon code over there if you want to try out Yarnable as well, but yeah, just thought I would share this since it's sitting right here and I'm going to cake this up and this will be the next pair of socks that I cast on. I received a package from Cookie and Bees. I've used their, uh, their, <laughs> their, <laughs> their, um, little cake cozy, yarn cake cozy things over the years. And they sent over some new ones for me to try. So they sent me two large ones. This is one of them. These are for like a hundred gram cake of yarn. And here's the other fabric. And then they also have little 20 gram ones. They are so cute. Look how little they are. So she thought I might enjoy these for contrast collars for heels, toes, cuffs, things like that. So these are nice. You can put your, oh, they even have their tag on the inside. You can put your cake of yarn in there, especially if you have two cakes or something, and it really keeps them from getting too tangled up. I also received my row one package for this month. This is a mini skein, mini skein subscription service. It's definitely fun if you want to try out a new, like find some new yarn dyers and also build up your mini skein um, stash for scrappy projects or heels, toes, and cuffs. Ooh, that looks yummy. So there's always a little package here. I'll show you what I'm over here opening up. I'm just sitting here opening it and you can't even see. And this month, the yarn dyer is Murky Depths Dye Works. I, another one I've never heard of. Most of the ones in row one, I have never heard of. And it's so fun to find new yarn dyers. And so they give you some information on the yarn dyer, the company, and it lists all of the colorway names. There's always a fun little progress keeper, stitch marker. What does this one say? A more. And they sent some m &Ms. <laughs> If you watch the Yardable unboxing, you'll know that I love getting little treats. I love m &Ms too. So the yarn, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm gonna have to pull that out and put it in my sea glass right here. What is that called? Hot house flower. So pretty. 
Looks like these are all on, I would guess, an 80-20 base. Yes, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. I am gonna keep these in here just because I always keep them packaged. So there'll be a little bit of a glare, but. If you are wanting to build up your mini skein scrappy stash, row one is a great way to do it. If you're wanting to find yarn dyers, it's a great way to sample their work and see different colorways and get an idea of what their, their yarn is like. Um, I love that each one is ready to go. You don't have to cake it up. You don't have to ball it up, nothing. You can work right from this. And they label each individual one with the yarn dyer and the colorway name. So much work goes into this and it is just absolutely amazing. Okay. I may have bought a new project bag. So Erica of the Scrappy Thread had a shop update with these huge scrappy bags and i mean they are they are full on scrappy this is not um a fabric that looks like it's patchworked she has patchworked these together i mean just so much talent and work and it's massive like it is such let me open it up here a big bag has a boxed bottom on the inside there's pockets there's some little oh you're not gonna be able to see down inside there are those called grom grommets right grommets but yeah so many pockets got a ring right here on the outside and look at like the detail that she has in her bags i mean oh my gosh so good so good so yeah i love this and i love that it is like a actual real scrappy patchwork bag amazing so i'm very happy to have this i don't know what's going to go in it yet probably one of my crochet blankets um they're starting to outgrow the bags that i have them in i did i had them in the same bag and they definitely outgrew that and then they are starting to outgrow even being in their own individual bags so i may put one of them down in there because i are in here i'm only working on one currently and i'll do a scrappy sunday video maybe next week or something but yeah anyways that's probably what will go in there i've done some shopping recently <laughs> i mean it's okay right i got the and i ordered this quite a while ago a Golden Girls advent calendar for February from Fangirl Fibers. I'm opening up the box here so I can show you all the goodies. So let me show you all of the little goodies that it came with and then I'll show you the mini skeins that I've opened so far. I actually haven't opened today's yet. Here's today's, so we'll open it too. But I've got the ones I had have already opened in here, so I'll set that aside. will show you the extras. Just making sure I got everything. Okay, I'll show you the extras. So we have the Progress Keeper set from Fangirl Fibers. I love her Progress Keepers. And these are going to be so good for socks. They are such a good size. So each golden girl we have a California lollipop orange. A Golden Girls Ocean Breeze Scented Candle by Fangirl Fibers. Awesome. I haven't even looked through all of these. I've been opening the minis, but, oh, that smells good and that is so cool. I 
I love that smell. Tuck these back into the box here. We have a little box to open. Oh, that's so cute. It is a cup, a tumbler, and this is the Golden Girls, and then it has a ton of different sayings. It's a picture. Oh, this is so cute. And then it came with a straw for it as well. So those are all the little extras. And I've been opening the minis. I don't know what day was what, but I'll just kind of hold them up here so you can see what days one through eight, today's the ninth. So one through eight have looked like. Not the best way to show them, I guess, but they're very, very pretty. And then let's open day nine. And there is a full skein of yarn in there as well. Um, I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to wait and open that after all the minis. Ooh, this one says, picture it, Sicily, 1922. And it does tell you on here, it says this is from season three, episode 12. So it tells you like a quote or something and then um, what it came from. Like this one is season one, episode eight, pray for brains. So yeah, super fun to see, like read all the inspiration. This one, I actually have a magnet on my fridge that says this, eat dirt and die trash, <laughs> season two, episode nine. So this has been a lot of fun. I'm so glad that I got this. Um, it's kind of fun to have it in February, you know, Advent's opening all of that in December and then go cold turkey not opening <laughs> up a little mini skein every day. So it was nice to know that I had this coming for February. So yeah, I'll keep opening those and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I imagine the full skein I will probably knit socks with. I mean, probably. All right, I only have one other thing. This is prob, well, it, it's gonna be over a 30 minute episode today, but. I needed to order more yarn for my sea glass. I needed more of the Knit Pick Swish DK in Dove Heather. So I ordered some more of that. Just because I, what I'm using was leftover from all of the bean and olive sweaters that I knit for my nieces and for myself. And I knew I was not gonna have enough to finish it. So I went ahead and ordered some more, probably more than I need, but it's a great color. I'll use it for something else. And I also ordered, a, cause you know, knit picks. Why just buy this and pay the shipping when if I order more yarn, I can get free shipping, so. This is gonna be the year of sweaters for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put that out there into the world that it's gonna be the year of sweaters because I have so many sweaters I want to knit. I'm so inspired by so many sweater patterns I favorited so many lately. I've ordered yarn from Knit Picks for so many lately. It's gonna be the year of Knit Picks and sweaters because I just can't get enough of the Knit Picks. I am loving the wool of the Andes that I'm using for my cartwheels. First time using it, absolutely loving it. My Bean and Olive turned out amazing with the Swish DK. Like I just can't get enough of it. So I ordered more wool of the Andes in the tweed, this time worsted weight, in wreath heather. Look how good that is. It is showing on this screen, I'm not sure how it's gonna show when I go to edit, but it's showing a little darker than it is. It's so, so good. And I don't have a tweed sweater, so I, or actually, I take that back. I have like a knit it ages ago. It does have tweed in it. 
it's not really like a sweater sweater but anyways yeah this is gonna be good I am think that with this I'm going to do the September jacket by Petite Knit so that sweater calls for two strands of mohair and a strand of fingering weight held together and going through the project pages some people just use worsted weight so that's what I'm going to use because I can't do I can't do mohair um I've talked before about having one an alpaca allergy and then it just seems like the mohair just like I my allergies just cannot handle it and I hate it because I love how soft the mohair really makes everything that it's used in look but I just can't I'm a wreck if I'm around it touch it use it yeah total wreck so no more here I'm gonna try this I think that'll be gorgeous I think the tweed will make it even cozier looking I'm excited I really want to start it that's been my problem lately is really really wanting to start all the sweaters so that's why I'm hoping to today sit down and really put some work into both of my sweaters I just haven't had like I said the time to just like sit and work on them and it's just at the end of the day when I sit down to watch TV and I really get to pull my knitting out and it's not just a knit a little bit here and there or knit in the car or knit on lunch break or something it's my brain is just ready to wind down and I just reach for my socks at that point um I need to have a sweater that's just something stockinette I should do the D is it the DKR or DRK DRK everyday sweater that I had gotten at fixed yarn for that would be fun to do because it is just a lot of stockinette and it wouldn't be as much having to think about a pattern or something because I just don't ever really feel like working on my sweaters when I sit down to watch TV in the evenings I just want to grab socks and that's it and that's okay but I'm just in I want this to be the year of sweaters I really do because I have so many that I want to knit and wear and I know last year I wished I had more in the winter and then this year I've wished the same thing and more thicker weight sweaters DK and above um, I do have some fingering weight ones I want to do as well but I definitely want more thicker cozier garments to wear okay I think that's it I've rambled enough I hope that you all are doing well I hope that you enjoyed catching up with me today and I will see you all again soon until then happy knitting bye